Good morning, and welcome to day 28 of our meditation time together. Let's go ahead and drop right in. All right, let yourself land wherever it is that you do your meditation. So, chair, bed, floor, walking around outside. And let yourself start to connect to this place where you are on this planet named Earth. I love the description, this blue planet that's hurtling through space at however many miles per hour. Here we are. Here we are. All right, so feel your body. Yep. And then today, let's imagine we can start by growing roots. So I want you to feel either your feet that are attached to the earth, or if you're sitting down and your bottom is the closest part uh, to the earth. Whichever feels the most um, able to root in. Imagine you can open up a valve or a door and you can feel or sense roots starting to grow from your body straight down into the earth underneath you. If you're several floors up in a building, you can imagine those roots run across the floorboards all the way to the walls, and then they go down the walls, and they're seeking dirt, they're seeking the earth, right? A root that is above ground eventually is going to die because it's not getting the nutrients that it needs. So visualize that your connection to the earth is going to have that same need to go deeper, that need to uh, connect down and in. And then visualize those pathways being created. If you're putting your attention on it, the energy is going to follow that. So you don't necessarily have to feel it in your body. If you consistently picture it, visualize it, see the energy going to the place that you want it to go to, it will do that. It will follow the path that you create for it. So visualize in whatever way feels the most logical to you or the most possible. Roots connecting your physical body directly into the ground underneath you. And then as those roots hit the dirt, it's, it's like they've hit the mother load, right? They're so excited. So visualize those roots starting to divide and spread and get wider and then go deeper down. If you've ever played in the dirt as a child or even as an adult, the top layer of the soil is usually warm because the sun hits it and so it keeps the temperature that is above the ground, the air temperature. As you dig deeper in, the soil tends to get colder or cooler as you go down. So see if you can sense a match in your body as you start to root yourself down into the ground. And by that I mean, what if your legs start to feel a little cooler because they're now closer to that deeper layer of root? And so the energy can activate an awareness, um, a connection to your senses and perhaps that's how you feel that you're getting the rooted, that you're getting the connection down into the earth. Yeah, what I notice, the deeper I visualize my roots going down into the dirt, if I can go down, you can do it with me, 100 feet down, feel the roots going that far down. Imagine they go another 100 feet below that and then they spread sideways out in all directions, another 100 feet or 500 feet. So you've got this radius underneath your body of rooted network web of energy underneath your physical body. What I notice when I go deeper down is it gets quieter. And by that I mean the chatter in my mind isn't as loud, the uh, to-do list starts to kind of dissolve or not be at the center of my attention, my awareness. It kind of gets quieter. So the sense that you're turning on might be your hearing, right? That everything just gets a little 
softer. The noise isn't as loud. I have many people, clients I know, who see colors. You know, when their eyes are closed, it activates eyesight from the third eye from a different perspective. And so for someone like that, if that's you, when you're going down into the dirt, what you might see is a whole different way of seeing. You might have flashes of color appear. You might have images that show up in your mind. All of it is just information that is coming through to you because you're quieting everything down and you're bringing your attention into yourself, your own awareness, your own knowing. So imagine you can drop the roots. Let's do it one more time. Let's go 500 feet down from wherever your web is in this moment. All the roots, if there's 10 or 100 or a million, go 500 feet down further into the dirt. Just visualize it. And then they're going to go a mile out in every direction from you out. And this might happen very quickly for you, or it might be a really slow, steady, almost like you're walking that mile. All of it is right. None of it is wrong. So just take a moment, let yourself feel how this rooting system is going really far out. So there's this huge radius underneath you of energy that you're hooking into through the earth. Good, and then here's, here's the trick, here's the gift. Relax your body. Yeah, there you go. Just let your body breathe. Loosen all the muscles, loosen your shoulders, and then just feel that connection hasn't gone anywhere. You're just not holding on to it as tightly. You're not trying to grip it or keep it or make it work. It just hooks you in through the earth, underneath, spreading out. And you can just relax your body and feel here you are in this moment, grounded, present, awareness inside of you. Good, and from this space, imagine you can um, allow anything that's in your body that might be trying to still hold on or that has an opinion about grounding or that's chastising you for not keeping up, not doing it right, whatever the mind wants to say. Imagine any of those energies can just make their way into the center of your body and then go all the way down to your hip bones, divide at your legs, and then that energy can just rush straight down your legs all the way through to your feet. If you're sitting cross-legged on the floor, it can go out your ankle bones, wherever you're touching the surface of the earth. And then open up those pathways again and just send all that energy down through the roots into this network that you've created underneath you in the earth. And you might feel a pulling down as you do that, as you're releasing your energies that want to move down into the earth, your physical body might kind of uh, shrug, um, <laughs> like curl in on itself a little bit as it's releasing. Feel it go all the way down through your feet and out. And then bring your body back into a relaxed space. Tune into your breath. You might want to have a couple of big exhales to push any other places where you're feeling stuck or blocked or heavy down through your body to your legs out through your feet and into the earth. And if you find yourself hanging on to it right at your feet, make it a co-creation. Allow the earth to meet you at the bottom of your feet and suction or pull or tug the energy that's ready to be released from your body out of your feet and into the earth. There you go. 
Yeah, so many of us are surprised when we feel that the earth would actually want to take this energy that doesn't feel good in us. Why would the earth want it? It really is this beautiful dance of us handing over the places that aren't serving us anymore, handing over the lessons we've learned and releasing them. And then that energy being used by the earth to create new energy that can then come in and fill us back up. Good. So scan your body one more time. Any places where there's a contraction or a block or a stuck spot. See if you can use your breath, use your attention by, by looking at it, by paying attention to it, and just send it down and out through your legs to your feet, into the earth. Good. And then relax your body and come back, come back to this place of seeing what is next for us. So the topic that came up for me today in my meditation was this um, idea or spiritual, um, what is the right word? There's like a popular way now to look at a person who's spiritually waking up. You know, they're seeing the light, they're understanding, they're evolving, they're enlightened, you know, there's a lot of uh, jargon to describe this process of somebody who is finally waking up. And so I wanted to explore that together today, um, not from a space of judging or comparing or evaluating, but how does it feel inside of us and what do we do with it? What do we do with it? Because it can feel really intense as it's happening. So what I'd like you to do, let's see how we want to do this. What I'd like you to do is visualize how you wake up in the morning. Let's start with that. So if you have rested well, you slept through the night, you feel ready for the day ahead, you're excited about what's going to happen next. There's a way that you wake up in the morning that feels very joyful. You know what to predict. You know how the day is going to go. You took care of your body. There was a lot of self-love. So here you are starting a new day and everything behind you has gone the way you wanted it to go. Everything in front of you of the day ahead looks like it's going to go the way you want it to be. And so there's this really peaceful way you wake up energized, ready to go. Uh, for children, it's, it's so easy to watch this with children. When your son or daughter has a field trip, perhaps, or a grandchild, and they know today's the day we're going to the zoo, or it's my birthday party, or it's Christmas, they wake up with such excitement, ready, like they can't wait for their day to begin. And they're bouncing around the house. And so being able to predict and anticipate and expect the good changes their entire framework of how they get moving in the morning. In comparison, uh, this is perfect for today. My son has testing at school, three hours of testing. And last night when he went to bed, it was heavy because tomorrow is going to be hard. And when he woke up this morning, it was heavy because he's got three hours to sit in this test. And so the entire day is already prepared to be difficult. He's preparing to battle his way through this day. And some of that is just our nature, right? How we're wired. If we're naturally optimistic or sad or angry or fearful, that determines a lot of how we wake up in the morning. But I think more of it is determined by can we predict or control what the outcome is going to look like? And are we comfortable with where we've been and how we've arrived as we wake up in the morning? For me, spiritual waking up, I think, follows that same visualization, that same analogy. When we start having these questions that come up 
inside of us. You know, we've known life to look a certain way and it's predictable and it's routine and we can control it to some extent. So it feels safe. It feels very comfortable. And then these questions start to come in and they niggle at your mind and they poke at different parts of you and they prod you. And suddenly you're questioning things that you believed always were true. And you're picking up books you never thought you would want to read before or you're listening to podcasts or you're watching TV shows that confirm some of those questions or bring more questions in on top of that. And it's it starts to feel very confusing as you break apart some of those old ways of believing or knowing and unravel or sit with process, right? It can feel very scary and very confusing. And sometimes in that process, it's too much. It's too overwhelming for the moment. And so we shut it all down. We lock it up. We put everything back in the closet and tell ourselves, maybe we'll look at it later. Maybe there's something there for me. Maybe there isn't. But right now I'm too busy or there are too many people who count on me. There, It would be selfish for me to take this time to do this exploration. Or what if it makes me leave my marriage, leave my home, leave my job? What if the changes that this opening in my mind creates are too chaotic, too painful, too difficult? And so no judgment, no judgment. I've been there. <laughs> I've been there. I filed for divorce and pulled it back and stayed a year longer. I get it. It's terrifying sometimes to make a change that you know could blow your world apart. But there's, there's something in your soul that is saying we're out of alignment. We're not at our fullest potential of who we came here to be. To me, what it felt like was, it was like my soul was crying, crying inside, not angry and yelling at me, but just grieving, grieving the possibility of what I knew I came here to be and do. And I was staying in my very comfortable zone, very successfully. <laughs> doing everything I was supposed to do and yet not fulfilled, not content, not joyful. And so waking up to me was like walking on the edge of a cliff and having no idea what it was going to look like after each change that came up in my path. It can feel really scary to be walking the edge of a cliff. And if that's where you are, I hear you. I really hear you. It's intense and um, it can feel like the world will literally just fall apart under your feet. So what I most want to say to you is getting, getting up to the edge is to me the hardest part. Once you step over, once you wake up and you feel who you are and what your soul has always wanted you to be in this lifetime, it is the most liberating, <laughs> joyous, fulfilling experience possible. And some days you'll feel every drop of that joy and other days you're going to cry and go, what did I do? And yet you will never feel more alive than when you take that leap. 
So the suggestion or the offer is to tap back into how we would feel as a child, to go back to that expectation or anticipation that when we wake up in the morning, we're going to be amazed and delighted by the day. Because I do believe that is that is the direction our soul is guiding us towards. I don't believe that our souls come here to keep us in suffering. There may be suffering that happens so that we have a contrast, so that we can feel what we don't want, and it pushes us to create what we do want. But I don't believe our souls come here to be in pain, to have physical bodies that suffer all day, every day, to feel pushed down or confused or less than. I believe our souls come here to expand and to grow and to, above everything else, to love. To love more. And to love more than that. And more than that. And so what if we allow ourselves to wake up like a child who is expecting the day to be the most amazing day yet in his or her life. We're well equipped to handle it if it isn't that. Many of us have tools in our toolbox of meditation, of exercise, reaching out to friends, coaches, reading articles, listening to blogs, there, there's a wealth of resources around us as adults. If we start to get off track or if we get stuck in our story again that the day isn't going well and it isn't a good day and it's not what we expected, we have all these things around us to help us pull out of that story and land on our feet and get centered again. But the biggest shift, I believe, is in our, our attitude, our expectation, our anticipation that the day is going to be a good one, an incredible one, and that life is only going to get better. It's only going to bring us more, more of everything, more love, more play, more joy, more abundance more time, more delight, more contrast, more shadow so we see the shadow and we know which places we want to bring in light. All of it, more of all of it. And instead of dreading that day and waking up, we anticipate it, we delight in it. Many of the people that I work with have shifts happening in their lives, in their skills, in their gifts. And as those gifts are uncovered, perhaps they see people um, energetically with auras or colors. Perhaps they suddenly can tap into past lives or patterns that people have had before. Perhaps they uncover that they are hands-on healers. Perhaps they uncover that their gift is actually to teach, to coach, to guide. There are all these ways that people are waking up and we can wake up and dread it and be in fear and resist it like my son with his test this morning, and create this expectation that it is going to be a terrible day and no matter what I do, it's going to suck. And probably what will happen is you're going to have a terrible day and it is going to suck. There's an awesome children's book called Alexander and the Terrible, No Good, Very Bad, Horrible Day or some title like that. And it just describes his expectation that it is going to be awful. And of course, it is awful. Or... We make the choice in the morning to wake up 
and to be excited and delighted and prepared for something amazing to begin. So the invitation is awareness. Bring your awareness to how you wake up in the morning. You can stay here in this meditation space after I wrap up and go back through this day, today. How did you wake up this morning? How did the day go from the way you started it? Is there anything in this moment that you can shift and create a different outcome now for the rest of the day? Is there a commitment you can make to yourself of how you'd like to wake up tomorrow morning? And then just let that become your norm. And as you do that, you're going to trust more. You're going to expect more. You're going to be able to receive more. And as your gifts start to come forward, those unique things that only you can bring to this world, nobody else, you bring it in a way nobody else could do it. When those gifts start to wake up inside of you, you're going to be ready to receive them. You won't be in resistance anymore. You'll be aligned with that and flowing with that and ready to receive and expand it. I promise I'm here on the other side of the cliff telling you it's the most beautiful beach, ocean, sunrise, sunset I've ever seen. It wasn't even a cliff. It never was a cliff. It was just the best of life that I didn't know was waiting there for me. Yeah. So that's that's how I feel about waking up. <laughs> it's incredible. It is incredible. <sighs> so much love from my heart to yours. 